Hi guys and welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Well we've got a couple of button over image hover effects for you today. Got one here on the left. If I hover over, a little button's going to appear. You can click on it, take people where you want to take them. One on the right, pretty similar. Hover over, a button's going to appear. You can click on it, take people where you want them. We've got one here where we're using no coding, we're just using modules and positioning to do this. And we've got one here where we're using a bit of coding to do this. Great little features to have on your site, really easy to do. So let's get started. I'm going to enable the Visual Builder. Okay, and let's go down and I'll just delete this little row that I've got here. Green tab for a row. Great, well I've just got a regular old section here, the blue tab. Let's add a new row. I'm just going to put two columns in mine. And for the first one, I'm actually going to use a call to action module. I find it easier than using a button for positioning. There it is. Don't want a title. I'll leave the button text just as it is. I don't want any content. Obviously, you can put your link in here button link URL. If you want the whole module, so that if they click anywhere where we've got an image, it's, if they click anywhere on it, you can put a link in here or put the same link in both. And always best practice, if you're linking to your own site, keep it in the same window. If you're linking off site, open it in a new tab. That way your site will stay open. Great. Well, let's throw a link in there. I'll just make mine a hashtag. Once you put a link in for the button, it'll turn up. Okay, what I want to do now is I don't want a background on there, so I'm going to take that away. And it'll look like the button disappears because it's white on white, and I'll change that in a second. I'm going to get rid of the background color there. Now let's actually go over to our design. I'll go down to the button, bring it back so we can see it. There's the button. I'm going to use custom styles. Button text size I'll leave as it is at 20 picks. Button color, white. Button background. Let's just make that purple. And I don't think I want a border on there. Great, well there's our button. Let's just save that. Now we want this button to appear over an image. And the way this first one's going to work, like a lot of image text hover effects, is the image that we put in there is going to be in the column that this button's in. So let's go into our row. We're working on column one here. We'll go in there. Let's add a background image. And we've got color, gradient, image, which we'll be using, video, background pattern, or background mask. I'm going to use the image. Pop in whatever image that you want. I'm not using parallax or anything like that. And I've got mine on the default settings, which are cover, center, no repeat, and normal for image blend. Great. Well, we can save that now. What we need to do now is go back into our button and actually make it the size that we want it. I happen to know my last one was about 340, but you can adjust it how it works for you. So let's go in there. I'm going to go to my design. Let's move this across over here. I'm going to make it the size that I actually want it. So I'm going to go down to sizing. I'm going to use minimum height for this. And you can just drag the slider, as you can see it's made it very deep there, down to where it is the, the shape that you actually want your image. Now I think mine was about 340. And the only reason I made it like that, because that seemed to be the default size for the image when I put the next image in next door. Great, so that's the sort of size and aspect that I want mine. And it won't get any smaller than that. It will allow it to get bigger if it needs to. Let's have a look at it on a tablet and mobile, make sure we don't need to do any adjustments. Common to most Divi modules, hover over the dark writing. You'll see some little icons appear. Go to the thing that you want to edit, in my case, the minimum height here. If there's a little round icon, phone looking icon there, click on it. It'll give you an option of a desktop, tablet, and mobile, and you can put different settings in for each. Let's have a look at tablet. Yeah, on tablet, I'm going to want that a lot deeper. So again, we'll drag it down to be about the aspect that we want. And again, that looks like about 340. Let's 
just make sure that we did put it in here correctly. Yep, it's there. So three, let's take that down to 340. It should work for all of them. That's okay. Now let's have a look on tablet. And again, usually, if you put it on desktop, it'll filter down to mobile. That's okay, a bit too much. Let's say 240. That'll work for me on mobile. Great. Let's go back to desktop view. And what we need to do now is actually position that button sort of where you want it. You can have top, bottom, wherever you want. I'm going to use have mine probably in the middle. So still in design, I'm going to go to spacing. Let's close up sizing. Spacing is just below. I'm going to put some padding on the top. Let's try 150. I think you'll find that will be pretty close because when I actually save this, it's going to shrink just slightly. So let's save this and see what we've got. You can save that. Hit the little purple button. Save or save draft. Let's exit the Visual Builder and see what we've got. We're rolling down. There it is. Yeah, that's not too bad. That's fairly central for me, that button. And if you notice anywhere that we roll over it, you can actually click on it because we put the link in the actual module itself there as well as the button. So if they click on the button or the actual image, it'll take them to whatever URL you've put in there. Great, so that works. I'm going to show you another way that you can do with code. So let's enable the Visual Builder again. Okay, and let's go down and add a new module. This time I'm going to add an image module and you can use any module you like for this. It doesn't have to be an image. I'm using an image because I'm doing button over image effects. <laughs> so once you get in there, let's move this so we can see. Let's choose our image. There it is right there. Okay, and to do this one, we're doing it with straight CSS code. So I'm gonna go over to my advanced and any code I write, I'll put down below the video. So don't let it put you off. I'm gonna go down to the custom CSS box. I'm gonna go down to my after. You see a little box here that says after, pseudo element. And okay, so what do we wanna do? I wanna put some content in. It's gotta say, click me. So I'm gonna say content semicolon, then I'm going to open some inverted commas and inside the inverted commas you can put whatever text you want. So click here, learn more, whatever. So I'm going to put click here, whatever it is you want to put in yours obviously. Okay, we need to put a semicolon because we want to write another line of code. So we told it what we want. Let's tell it where we want it. I'm going to say position, colon, absolute. So it'll stay where we put it on whatever screen size. And where do we want it? I want it in the middle. So let's say top, I'll say 50%. And also left 50%. And that'll put the left hand corner of it in the middle. So let's say left, colon, 50%. And I know you can't see anything yet because we've not given it a color or style or anything. But before I do that, like I say, if I put it top, middle, and left middle, the actual left-hand corner of it will be dead center. Now I want to scoot it back so it's in the middle of the word, top, bottom, left, right. To do that, I'm going to have to transform it a bit with a bit of translate. So I'm going to say transform, colon. I want to translate. Open some round brackets on the end of that. And I'm going to say negative 50% by negative 50%. So it's gonna drag it back half of its width and half of its height, which should put it in the middle. And I'll demonstrate this for you when you can see it in a minute, it might make more sense. So let's say 50%, I'm gonna say comma, 50%. So we can do height and width separately there. Great. Well, let's actually bring it in now so we can see it. Let's give it a color, let's say color. I'm gonna make mine white, hashtag FFF. And there it is right there. Well, that doesn't look like it's in the middle to me. What I've done here with my translate, 
I've done positive 50% instead of negative 50%. It's pushed it halfway that way and pushed it halfway up and down. So if I put a minus sign behind these, that should drag it back to the middle. Negative 50 and negative 50. There we go. Believe it or not, that's right in the middle of our image there. Fantastic. And let's give it a font size. Let's try about 18 picks. I think the button was 20. As you can see, that's made that a bit bigger. Let's go down, we'll give it a background. You won't see it at first, because we haven't given it any size yet. And I'll make it that same purple color as the button that we had on the other one. I've got that hex code over here somewhere. Okay, and you don't see it because we haven't actually given it a size. So let's say, give it a bit of padding there. And let's do 25 picks by maybe 40 picks. And as you can see, that background's turned up there. It's looking a little big to me. Let's make it a little bit smaller. Let's try 15 top and bottom. No, that's too small. Now let's try 30 left and right, perhaps. Yeah, that, that's going to work for me. That's the sort of shape button that I want there. Great. Now, if you want to put slightly rounded corners on it, like the regular buttons, like perhaps that submit one down below, we can give it a border radius. And let's give it about five, six pixels. Let's say five pixels. And we've got slightly rounded corners there now. Fantastic. Now we want to be able to, we're going to put the link in the actual image itself rather than the button. We're not going to put a link in here. So where you want that button to take them, we'll put in the module. And to make sure it's going to work if they click on the module or the button, we've got to tell it pointer events none. So it's going to kind of click through it. So I'll say pointer events none so that's way that way when we put the link in this module in fact let's go ahead and put a link in there down to the content tab link you can have it open in a light box if you want to seeing as this is an image and if they click on the button it'll open in a light box or you can put a link in like you would any other so i'm going to just put a hashtag in for a link and as you can see my cursor's already changed and when they hit the button it's got that cursor on it as well and if you're wondering what that little N5 is down there, that's the actual title of the image. If you don't want that to pop up, pop over to your advanced tab, down to attributes, title text, simply delete it. Image alt text, that's for SEO purposes, it's actually for screen readers and you should describe your image with it, but a lot of people use that for SEO and put keywords in there. Okay, well let's go back over to our code in the advanced here custom CSS and we were working the after. We're almost there. But of course, I don't want to see that button at all at first. And I want it to fade in when we hover over the image. So to make it disappear, I can say opacity, O-P-A-C-I-T-Y, colon, zero, which is invisible. As you can see, or as you can't see, it's disappeared. And I want to bring it back. So now what we can do, let's just copy that opacity one. Same as all other Divi modules, if we roll up to the top here, there's the dark riding. If I hover over it, you've got those little icons again. If we've got a little arrow, click on the arrow, we can set a desktop state, that's when your mouse is not on it, basically what we're looking at there, and a hover state. And you can put different CSS in here. So I'm gonna put my cursor in there, I'm gonna paste that opacity one in there, or opacity zero in there, and I'm gonna change the zero to a one, which should bring it back. There it is like that. Opacity goes from zero up to one and you can increment different transparencies down or opacities. Great. So we fixed our opacity. Let's go back to our desktop state now. And the time it actually takes to roll from desktop to hover is going to be pretty instant seeing as we're doing it with code. I want to slow that down. So let's drop down. I'll use a bit of transition duration for that. And let's make mine about three quarters of a second. So that would be 0 0.75 seconds, 0.75 S, semicolon. And don't forget all this code will be down below for anybody that needs to use it. Let's save that. And for the transition duration for our first one here, I didn't show you that. If you just go into the module, again, it's not a coding thing, go over to the advanced. We can go 
down to transitions down here. There's the default 300 mils. You can either type in a value or we'll slide up. Let's make this one about three quarters of a second, 750 milliseconds. Don't want any transition delay. Want it to happen as soon as their mouse hits it. Transition speed curve, ease is gonna work. Actually, the one I like to use for my hover effects is ease in and out or ease in and out. They're all slightly different. Some will work better than others in certain situations, so check them out. But for hover effects, ease in out is usually my go-to. Okay. Well, let's save this and see if it's all gonna work on the front end. Little purple button, save draft or save. And let's exit our visual builder. Okay, and I haven't faded our button out there, so we need to correct that one out. Let's have a look at this one over here. This one's working absolutely fine. And as you can see, when we hover over it, it appears, we can click on it. When we take our mouse off, it disappears again. Well, let's quickly fix this, and it's really easy. All we gotta do is tweak the filter so that disappears and appears when we hover on it. So let's quickly go back into the Visual Builder. We'll go there, go into here, click on our little module. I'm gonna go over to Design. Let's move this over so you can see what's going on. I'm gonna roll down to Filters. And here's the actual hover effect itself that I'm going to use, roll down. And here's opacity again. And again, we'll roll over the dark riding on the thing we want. Get the little arrow up. Desktop, I don't want to see that there at all. So let's drag it down to invisible, 0%. Then when they put their mouse on it, I want it to come back. 100%. And we've already set the transition duration over here, 750. Let's save this and have another look. Exit the Visual Builder. Roll on down. There we are, that's better. Anywhere that we touch in here, that's gonna come back because the padding that we put around that button means that we're touching it as soon as we get on there, which is great. That one's working perfectly. And as you can see, we've got our little hand, so we can click on the link there. And here's our CSS one. There it is, and we can click on there, fantastic. And of course, you don't have to repeat this. You've got that code now, so you can put more modules in and just put that code in them, or duplicate this module and just change out the image. And the same with this one here, you can just duplicate it and change out the image in the background. So there you go, guys. There's two little button to image hover effects you may not know about. I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. Don't forget, if you have any questions, put them down below the video. I'll do my best to answer them for you or make a demo video if I can. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.